Where do hermit crabs come from? We're going to talk about that today. Right now we are looking at my website, cenobitaspecies.com, where I have built a gallery of all the known species of land hermit crabs and as much information about them as a species that I could collect from research. One of the features on my website is this hermit crab species map, which shows where we know hermit crabs exist around the world, basically, where they've been observed by researchers. They may be in some other areas that are unknown to us, and sometimes we do have areas added by local observations, but uh, I do try to stick to what is written in research and accepted as um, accurate information. We're going to open the map up and sort of go through these, but if you go to the website, you can open the map yourself and each one of these pin colors represents a different species and they're a different layer on the map and you can turn them on and off and explore the map and see where all the different species are at. From this picture you can see that they are clustered around the equatorial zone, which makes sense. They are a tropical animal so they live in the tropics. That's the easy answer of where hermit crabs come from. Let's jump over to the map. The very first species we're going to talk about is Cetabita compressus, which is also called an E or an Ecuadorian crab. They were seen at least at one point in time in the very southernmost part of California and all the way down to Chile. Now, why are they called Ecuadorians and not, you know, Guadalajara, Guadalajarans or uh, Nicaraguans? <laughs> I don't know. It could be uh, when they entered the pet trade, maybe they were shipped from Ecuador and that's where the name came from. Um, they are pretty popular in the pet trade and like all species in the pet trade, they are wild caught. So perhaps they were named because that's where the first of them began shipping from. I, I can't say if that's 100% accurate. But anyway, their range was all along the west coast of southern North America and northern South America. The next species that we're going to look at that's exclusive to one region is Cenobita clypetus, which is our native species, the Caribbean crab or the purple pincher crab. They're also called soldier crabs or tree crabs because of their tree climbing behavior. They are only found in the very southernmost part of Florida and then throughout the rest of the Caribbean. I do know that in Bermuda, their populations there are very threatened, and um, we learned during CrabCon last year that there were only about 150 crabs left in Bermuda. So we need to leave the wild crabs in the wild. Next up for an isolated species, we're gonna talk about Cenobita scavola and they are only found on the coasts of the Red Sea. There are no coastal forests here. This is a desert area. So these crabs are very much nocturnal because it is just simply too hot and dry for them to be out during the day. And they are very dependent on the ocean. They stay on the beach. So during the day, they're hiding in caves and under rocks out of the heat of the sun and keeping themselves cool and moist, and then when the sun goes down, they come out and begin scavenging. The next species that we know to be isolated to one area is the Aussie crabs, or Cenobita variabilis. They are found, of course, in the northern part of Australia, Aussie crabs. If I were gonna describe these, I would say that they look like uh, C. compressus went to the gym and took some protein powder and buffed up. <laughs> They are very similar in appearance. Another species that may be exclusive to one region is Cenobita rubicens, but there's very little research on them. And until recently, uh, when somebody got some into the pet trade, uh, I had only seen less than 10 photos of them. They just were not, um, Nobody is going into Equatorial Guinea and looking for these crabs or documenting these crabs or researching these crabs. So very little is known about them as a species. 
but they have started to show up in the pet trade. So somebody is exporting wild crabs from Equatorial Guinea. They may be found in other areas, but the, the one document written about them states that this is where they live. And there's a little island out here where they were found. The rest of the species can be found throughout the Indo-Pacific. They are widely distributed throughout the islands here. And that includes, these are all seen to be the species, so I'm not going to include that as I rattle off these names. Brevimanus, Kvipes, Lila, Perlatus, Pseudorugosus, Purpurius, Rugosus, Spinosus, Violacens, and two new species that are waiting to be named that were discovered by Felix Way. Felix is um, responsible for a lot of the information about the species and their habitats and their shell preferences. He is an unbelievable resource when it comes to identifying crabs and he's contributed a lot to the, the crab community. There are two other species that you'll see on the website and there, not much is known about them and they've only been written about one time so I'm not even entirely sure that they are their own species and perhaps maybe we're not another one of these species found in a different region and with different coloring and that confused the initial discoverer of them. Those two species are Longitaris and Carnesens and um, again there's no other recorded sightings of them beyond the original ones back in either the 1800s or the early 1900s. So uh, we don't have much information on those two species. But now you know overall where all of the species of C. nabita are found throughout the US and throughout the Indo-Pacific with the species also in Africa, Australia, Red Sea. You can see again, like I said, they're all through the tropics because they are a tropical animal. So now when somebody says, where did your hermit crab come from? You can tell them the exact region. Thanks for checking in. Happy crabbing.